So the first thing we do is we open Machinery Explorer and we browse to the folder we want to import our full images from. I'm just going to pick a series of images. Let's, well, let's work with these five images. And you can do one of two things. You can either right click and say add to project or you can just say to edit and by editing it will take it into the uh, HDR software. So that will load and uh, loads each image and processes. And my typical workflow, I start from HDR, then work through basic and then do filters. First thing I want to do is set my HDR look and then I make basic adjustments and apply any filters last. So those are about loaded. Runs through the tone mapping and everything. The next thing I do is I come up here and make sure I'm, I'm viewing full size. By default, it comes in at preview size at 1280. Uh, I like to work at full size, so it goes through the tone mapping everything once again. And I work at full size so that way when I save the uh, HDR, it doesn't save it as a smaller size because the save is based on your view size. And I know I have full size based on this icon here. It shows that I'm looking at it at full size. So the first thing I start with, I work top down. I work from image and I say, always turn on noise reduction, remove chromatic aberration. And then I turn on align images and remove ghosts. So as you see, every time I make a change, it goes back through a loading. Uh, it's doing that because of the align images and remove ghosts. I have another option here that I could use contour. Uh, contrast detection or edge detection. I just typically stick with natural HDR. I don't hardly ever use the other two. So we'll wait for those to load. 81%. Now it's going through the align. Reapplies the tone mapping. Okay, so now we've got our full size image. Everything's up to date. First thing we do is we look at the contrast. I believe by default it's set to this uh, fourth option. If I jump down, I can see the, the impact. These are fairly quick, so it's not too bad on adjusting those. And if I go extreme, wait for that to update. It's really crunchy at the at the highest setting. So for this image I'm gonna just take it back down to the third setting. <laughs> it's a little dark but we'll clean that up. You can then once you apply one of these presets here you can choose a strength and adjust further. So if I Bring up the shadows a little bit. Actually bring up the lights a little bit. Looks a little better. If I, if I was burning out my whites and I saw that in my histogram, I, I'd turn on overburn. I'm not. Um, one thing before I go any further I should mention, there are presets. So if you don't want to start from zero, you can come in here, pick a preset, and then adjust those. All you do is pick it and it'll apply those settings. I'm not going to do that. Uh, I then go into my details. And as you hover over these icons, you get, okay, details plus 100%, 50%, and so forth. So let's on micro contrast. Let's go. Uh, that's a way too crunchy for me. So is that. I'm just going to take it back down. And then you can, again, can increase the individuals. Go into smoothing. I like to go usually with low smoothing. You can see what it looks like here with a large smoothing. 
it's, it's really hard to tell the difference, but on some images, some images it's very obvious. Now let's just go with the, the medium. If you want to add any softness to the image, you can do that here. And then dynamic contrast. I'm just going to manually turn this up instead of starting with one of the presets. Let's bump up the overburn a little. Make sure I'm not killing the water. So now that I've done the HDR panel, I jump into the basic. Here I can adjust my white balance. By grabbing this here, you can see the color change. I can also pick this and tell it I want that to be white, and it'll white balance it based on that. I can go back to the predefined white balance. Maybe I want to bring that down just a little bit that way. I can also adjust my brightness of the image at this point. Bring up the contrast a little. See what the black point does on this. I've got too, too deep of shadows already. Might bring down the whites just a little bit. And saturation's a little hot for me, so I'll just touch minus four on that. <laughs> so then I'm going to go to my filters, start from the top. I can adjust each individual channel, red, green, and blue. Change the gamma of them. And for this one, I'm going to leave that alone. Uh, luminance mixer, color gradients, 3D LUTs. You can actually browse to a LUT file if you have one and apply it. And here I can change my colors. And so for this one, I'm going to go into my saturation. When I pick a point over here, it's going to put a point on my curve. So let's try to get one of these greens. You see it comes over here in the greens. And then I can adjust that up or down. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring those down a little bit so it's not too over-the-top HDR-ish. If I come back over here and pick another color, say maybe one of these browns, which shows me that it's in the red-orange spectrum, I can bring those up a little bit. Not too bad. Let's see what my blues here by picking in that water. I could really impact that water and make it have a blue hue to it. Which I don't mind a little bit here. I'm going to just leave it about there. You can also adjust the individual hues. You can adjust your sharpness. I'm going to apply some sharpening to this image. Bring up my radius and the threshold. And if you want a vignette, you can do the, that here. Adjust all the settings down here. I'm just going to leave it at none. And then watermark, which I, I don't have anything. So the last thing I'd do now before taking this into Photoshop or, or some other program, if I wanted to edit it further, is save the image. You can save the project, but if I save the image, It'll show here that it's working on full size. It only wants to save it at 72 DPI, and for HDRs, I usually say 300. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put it in my HDR folder, and it's going to name it this here, and I'll say save. So at that point, I'm, I'm done with this. Let's do one more where I actually um, use a preset. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. I could save the HDR file if I want. Um, then I could go back and edit those settings if I look at it and decide I want to do something different. I'm going to say no. So let's just grab a different set this time. I'm going to grab these four images and say edit. <clears throat> go back to my HDR. Go ahead and turn these on while it's loading these. I'll speed up the video so we don't have to watch all of this. Tweak it from there. So if we come in here and 
find the one that we kind of like. Uh, let's go with, let's try this micro contrast. You can see it applies those, those properties to it. If you don't like it, you can just always go back and pick another one. Uh, let's try this details. It's processing, and then, now we have it. So if we look down here, you can see these sliders are adjusted somewhat on this one because it's a details one. It's a lot higher. I'm going to bring down some of these. It's a little too much for me. I'm not going to adjust any of the others. I'm going to go into my basic, and we could look at histogram, we could look at level brightness. I'm going to, let's see on this one, actually just go into my color and look at my saturation. These greens are a little over the top, so here again I just use the eyedropper, find that point. I didn't grab the right point. If I delete that, cur cursor has to turn white to grab the actual point that's already pre-graded. So if I pull that down, you can see it drop all the color out. I'm just going to drop it to about there. I want to find one somewhere in this brownish in the water. Maybe I want to bring that up a little. Another one on this. Bring those colors up a little bit. I'm just going to create one for any blues that might be in the image. I want to bring those up a little. Let's see the blues increased up here. If I hold my right mouse button down, I'll get the original image versus the final. All I'm doing is pressing my right mouse button and releasing so I can get a preview. Again, at this point, I would I can crop, I can switch to my views and see the two side by side. Turn that off. So maybe I want to crop this image. Bring that down a little, lose a little bit on the bottom. And this time I'll just go ahead and save it again. HDR folder 300. And hit save. So now if I go into my HDR, let's look at my details. Date modified. Got two, two files here at the top. That I just created. And at this point I'd take both of these into either Lightroom or Photoshop and do any final edits that I might want. So hopefully this was helpful.